What's going on, Knicks fans? Welcome, welcome to another episode of Cap Rules Everything Around Me. Cream, get the money, dollar dollar bills, y'all. We have a very exciting episode. We are less than 24 hours away from free agency officially, well, unofficially starting. Uh, should be a fun time. We got you covered tomorrow. In the meantime, uh, some news that has broken recently. Uh, Chris Haynes reporting that Jalen Brunson will be taking meetings with the Dallas Mavericks and the Miami Heat in addition to the Knicks. That just feels like a great way to not have any tampering charges. Uh, you definitely don't want Brunson to be in the room with Pat Riley as he delivers his uh, spiel for why he can make the Miami Heat an elite team even further. But uh, not super worried. They're their financial situation is a little different. It comes down to Dallas and what they want to do. But it was also seemed to be reported, believed by Mark Stein, that the Mavs are not exactly holding out too much hope for this situation. So we will see what happens tomorrow. Um, maybe with the meetings that Brunson is not going to decide tomorrow, he might want a day to think it over. Or he might just, I don't know, have a Zoom call with all three of them and then 8 p.m. just wrap it up. Nice, pretty little bow on it and figure it out. So, uh, yeah, that's where we go. And uh, first comment I have in front of me, um, Totes My Goats. I'm here early hoping I get a shout out. Shout out, Totes My Goats. Great name. Love it. Um, there's there's your shout out. Uh, from JG, is Beal going to get the bag from Washington or is this him really wanting out? All indications seem to be that he wants to stay in Washington, that he does want the bag. I mean, financially, I say this financially, the way that you get Beal or one of the ways you get Beal, especially if the Knicks are looking to clear out Evan Fournier and Cam Reddish is uh, then to trade Julius Randle and Derek Rose. That's where the math works. Is that what's going to get it done? Probably not. But the thing to keep in mind, and I'm not suggesting Beal will be here by any stretch, but what I do think is kind of interesting is the fact that, well, when you're an unrestricted free agent and you do a sign and trade, your value, if you're the team that is trading you away, the, their value is pretty low. Not like low as in they're not going to get anything, but low enough where it's if he had opted in and they had one year of team control makes a lot of sense. But if it's zero years of team control and Beal says, hey, I've spent my entire career here, want greener pastures, whether it's New York or another place that's when the leverage shifts more to the team that's acquiring him. And then the wizards aren't just going to lie down and take it. They're probably going to try to put up a fight in some way. Um, and which will be in the case of, you know, a pick a couple picks, but it's not quite as severe as say, if Beal were, you know, there was a year left of his deal or half a year. But again, I, I, I don't know what any of these players is thinking whatsoever can't blame him for getting the bag that's generational wealth on top of generational wealth so good for him but you never know that the, the wizards to me i know a lot of people rag on the knicks plan and is there a plan there is no plan and all that but to me the wizards are pretty much the epitome right now of a team on a treadmill of mediocrity because they've got some nice rotation pieces and beal but um not a whole lot else so might just be best for them to part ways, but listen, if Bradley Beal wants to return for five years, you just do it. And then if you really want to Blake Griffin him, you can if you're Washington, but we'll see. Uh, sneaker premiere with the uh, very kind super chat contribution. Thank you so much. Uh, please tell Knicks fans two unprotected, uh, one unprotected swap, two protected first is too much for DeJounte Murray. Fans think we should have gave that all up and go with Brunson, Murray, RJ would lead us to the promised land, more so five to 10 seed. I just felt that the entire thing with DeJounte Murray made a lot less sense when Jalen Brunson was rumored to be in the fold. And you have to think that if the Knicks don't believe they could get Brunson, they would have pounced on Murray. But obviously that has changed because Murray is now a member of the Atlanta Hawks. I don't quite get the offensive fit. Don't know why Brunson would be here. I understand the cap strategy of, hey, this is an all-star. Let's bring him in. But the other thing with DeJounte Murray is he had a really good season. Um, definitely a good player, no doubt. 
I don't mean this is slander. It's just that he was also an injury replacement, I believe, for the All-Star team. And if memory serves, then it's the sort of thing like, well, if he weren't an injury replacement, what would the narrative around him be? Because I feel like labels just kind of take you further. But uh, again, he, he was an All-Star. It's a great haul by San Antonio. I I see what Atlanta is doing to an extent. I think there's still one major piece away, but they got better. But the unprotected picks, you know, I, I understand if you're a Knicks fan, you see DeJounte Murray and you're saying like, why is it that the Knicks with 11 picks didn't do that? Again, I, I've maintained I would rather have Jalen Brunson here and just have him with money than I would trading assets for DeJounte Murray when there could be something down the line. Because even though you have 11 picks in seven years, 11 first round picks in seven years, you don't have to use all of them. You don't have to use some of them. You don't have to use most of them. So um, I'm fine with it. I, I would understand it again from a cap perspective. Don't think it would be a great fit. Doesn't matter. Um, at the end of the day, it's a clutch client with another clutch client. So they stick together. Uh, Zach Smith. Hey, Jeremy, not Knicks related, but does the CBA allow for the Spurs to be a part of a sign and trade as a third team for uh, DeAndre Ayton as a salary dump spot for matching? Sure. Yeah. I mean, as long as they are, as long as they have the cap space to absorb or, trade player exceptions, although they're going to be so far under the cap that there will be no trade player exceptions for them. If they have salary where they can, I mean, they can still be involved hundred percent. The question of course is if Aiton would go to the Spurs. I know that's not what Zach's asking, but they seem to be on a collision course heading South uh, or potentially East for Victor, uh, Victor Wembanyama. Yama. He's going to potentially be the number one pick overall, and the Spurs might have the worst record in the NBA next year. So we shall see, but they can do it. Uh, Forgotten NYC, thank you for the super chat contribution. As John said, Leon has to resign if uh, Jalen Brunson doesn't come. I mean, it would be a major, it would be a lot of egg on his face, which is why I still am pretty confident that it will happen. But yeah, that would be at this point. It's one thing if a few weeks ago, Knicks couldn't get him for reasons. But at this point now, you're committed to him. You don't get him. That's just, that's, that's bad. That's not, that's not good. That's bad. Uh, Kurt Valenti. There has to be a second guy. Leon has his eye on someone. Does it happen this summer or later on? Who can it be? Could be multiple, honestly, down the, the line. I, so l- let me take it a step back because I do have, a theory that was kind of ruminating today, but let me start from the beginning. Last night we talked about Jalen Brunson, the $110 million people asked is the fact that Jalen Brunson's contract is high enough. Can you work out a sign and trade with Evan Fournier? And I wanted to double check the math. And the answer is yes. I think if Brunson is earning more than uh, $28.7 million in the first year, then you can find a way to sign and trade Evan Fournier as well. Well, be signing trading for Brunson, but you'd be trading out Fournier. Um, basically, uh, the longer answer for those who maybe are more interested in the salary cap, because uh, the Mavs are a, a tax team, it'd be 50% of the salary and then times 125% plus $100,000. That just anything above that, uh, it clears Fournier's $18 million. So that is the prevailing thought of how we probably got from 100 to 110. Now, the Mavs may not want Fournier. I think there's going to be a staring contest between the two of them because the Knicks can just sign Jalen Brunson and the Mavs lose him for nothing. But the Knicks also seem to want to move off of Evan Fournier's salary. But here's where it gets really, really fascinating for me, and I'm just scratching my head. So the Knicks can do two different things. Uh, they could essentially do the one-for-one trade in the sense uh, and create cap space. Or they could try to sign and trade for Brunson and then give the the Mavs a trade player exception. The Knicks then give Fournier, fit, fit him into the traded player exception, and then the Knicks walk away with a traded player exception. What's confusing to me, or at least what I'm trying to get an understanding of, is, well, there's still talk of moving Cam Reddish. So if you have these traded player exceptions, right, it's the Kemba Walker one, it's the Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel one, because it seems that those are two separate ones, and then it would be the Fournier a trade player exception, you wouldn't necessarily need, you know, like a $9 million one, an $18 million one, and a $19 million one. Uh, you could, but then how are you getting Brunson? You have to clear cap space and renounce them. So you could find a way, yes, to then, you know, get Brunson, 
have an $18 million or so trade player exception and then sign Mitch. And that's the case. But I'm a little skeptical of that, especially with the news of potentially still wanting to move Cam Reddish. Here's what I can say. Uh, I I know that things are eerily quiet with the Knicks. And I'm not, I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's just factually. They're, it's It's like Fort Knox right now. There's not a great reading on what's going on. And um, and listen, they're not the only team. I know there's a team in the Western Conference where it's really quiet for them too. Maybe it's the thing across the board, uh, or maybe just multiple teams are up to something. But the prevailing thought here for me is if the Knicks are clearing cap space, why? Right? Like, why would you clear cap space? Because with trades, you would just simply salary match. It would make a lot more sense to do that, right? Like, in this example with DeJounte Murray, I'm not saying that the Spurs would have wanted Evan Fournier, but the salaries match. So if the Knicks had wanted Murray, why would they have moved Fournier to another team and potentially paid to move his contract away and then trade for Murray to take him into the cap space? It doesn't make a lot of sense. And what I had been thinking about today, and I, I know that no matter how I say it, it's either going to excite a lot of people or it's going to anger people. And I, There's no way I can get through the thought process without doing either. So I'm just going to lay it out. I didn't really think much of the cap space, all that. And then this morning I read the Jake Fisher article and basically it talked about how the Knicks would be extending Mitchell Robinson. And I thought, okay, like that makes sense. Sure. It was four years and said in the range of $60 million. And I was just thinking that, that seems like a lot because we're talking about someone in Mitch who was potentially on the trade block. Granted, I don't know how close it was. Don't know what was offered, but he was on the block. So it feels like committing even with five or six million dollars in non-guaranteed money, even if it tops out at 60, that seems like a bit. Now, I know that Ian Begley very recently within the hour, within the half hour even, said that it seems like the Knicks were looking for backup options, not for Mitchell, Rob- not, not to Mitchell Robinson, but, but specifically behind Mitchell Robinson, where resigning him and, and going about that route. But what I kind of walked away from was, well, what are you clearing your cap space for? Because you can look at the market. I mean, there would have to be a ridiculous amount just to get Levine moving Fournay and Cam Reddish is not going to get you there. Uh, and it's certainly not going to get you there for Beal because he's earning 35%. So what are you doing exactly? And then there was the paragraph below it talking about DeAndre Ayton. And I know people asked last night if they think DeAndre Ayton's possible. And I just kind of was like, that's ah, really complicated and, and don't really know about that. And then uh, today it's kind of thinking like, well, if the Knicks are still looking to move Fournier and Cam Reddish, what other free agents are really out there? Presumably if you get Brunson, you're probably not going to go after someone like Colin Sexton. You're probably not going to, like I said, there are some unrestricted free agents who just probably aren't going anywhere. The math gets too tricky. James Harden's not leaving the the Sixers. Um, And then it's just like a dramatic drop-off in other players. And it's really like, you're not going to get Miles Bridges if you have Obi Toppin, and and especially if Julius Randle's still here. It makes no sense. And so my whole thought process was like, well, the Knicks could still do the Evan Fournier and Jalen Brunson sign and trade that would leave them with, I want to say like, well, as I pull it up, it, it would leave them with enough cap space where it felt like, okay, there's something to work with here. That's pretty good. I'll take it. Um, but the problem there is it's just like, why? Well, like what exactly are, are, is being accomplished here? So if you do the sign and trade with the new salary cap of projected 123.65 million, uh, and you did again Brunson for Fournier. It tops out at the Knicks having twenty three point four million dollars in cap space. If you move Cam Reddish then for no salary return, whatever it might be, then it's twenty eight point three seven million dollars with still Mitch's cap hold on the books and waiving Taj Gibson. And so that was the thought process I had, which was like, well, what if the Knicks are raising Jalen Brunson's salary to get Evan Forney out the door, moving Cam Reddish, and then trying to sign and trade for Aiton. And then basically what would happen is the Suns would, you know, sign and trade Aiton into New York's cap space, which in this case, again, is like $28.3 million. 
And then from there, what you would essentially imagine is I mean, there are a few options. You, you could try a sign and trade for Aiton and Mitch together. It's probably not going to work due to matching rules. But you could do a sign and trade and have Aiton come to New York. And then that creates a traded player exception of, um, if it's $28 million, for example, $14 million because of base year compensation. And if Mitchell Robinson is making, again, like close to $60 million, that should actually work. You can then sign and trade him into the trade player exception you've created for him with the eight and trade. And then even the Knicks might get a trade player exception. Or you don't trade Mitch into the eight and traded player exception. You trade Mitch for like expiring salary if they're looking to get money off the books, like charge. Uh, and granted, it wouldn't just be eight and walks away. There'd be a first round pick at least coming back. Maybe someone like Deuce McBride would go because if, you know, if you're still, if you still have other players, I don't know. But, but that's the point where you could still kind of mix and match. It's not a huge deal. But again, I, I, I expect the idea of Mitchell Robinson to still be here. I think that's valid. It just kind of caught me in a moment where it's like, why else would you clear cap space if you don't like the free agent market? And if you are unlikely to trade for a star into your cap space and you still need the money to match, even if you used cap space and it, it it's just very complicated. So uh, it's just a long winded way of saying, I think some, something smells fishy. Uh, this doesn't pass the smell test to me. I'm very curious as to what occurs and um we shall see but yeah it just seemed something seems off not in a bad way just just something just seems off uh from uh, lunas amarat super chat thank you so much uh your opinion what percentage of each evan and number 30 being moved uh i feel like i kind of maintained that evan fournier probably needs to get moved and i think that only intensifies here with Randall, I just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with the idea of him being traded right now. I think, I just, I think that light has kind of dimmed dramatically. I, I just, it's possible. Sure. It's definitely possible, but his value is so low that I, I would understand why the Knicks would keep him. I don't love that, but I would get it. I, I would understand. So I'll say low. Let's let's say ten percent. He killed the uh, the optimism is dead for me. Uh, Mino F. Jeremy, why are the Knicks trying to move off of Cam if they just freed up minutes for him and Grimes? Uh, don't want to extend him. This is the other thought. If the Knicks want to be over the salary cap in twenty twenty three, it would make sense to extend him. I think that the Knicks just found that that first round pick, which conveniently is now owned by the Spurs because of the Dejounte Murray trade, would have that Cam would have more value than that. And maybe there's a team that does value Cam more, but they have to find a home for him. And, you know, like, I'm not saying the Knicks can easily replace Cam, but at the same time, like, if you're looking for someone to solidify the three and you're the Knicks, like, is Kyle Anderson going to get more than the room exception? I don't know. It depends on if Memphis has the room for him. I don't mean that room exception. I mean, has the space for him. I don't mean cap space. I mean, if they physically want him, um, too many cap jargons. So if they do that, then if they if they feel like he's not returning, I could see the Knicks basically saying, well, we're not going to spend the room exception on anyone anyway, unless it's thinking Taj to come back again. So that's certainly one option. But again, it, it plays into this larger plan that I wonder if the Knicks have, but they're just being very quiet about it. So um yeah. Jeremy E, thank you for the super chat contribution. Tell me the Miami and Dallas meetings are just optics and I don't need to worry about not getting Brunson. Yeah, I would imagine they're just optics. It's basically, hey, I granted you a meeting. I heard you out. Let's, it just didn't work. I wanted to go a different direction. And I, I would imagine the Mavs meeting might be a little awkward, but he also can meet with the Mavs before free agency starts. So it's very possible that. He does that and then meets with the Heat, whether there's a representative that is in the building, whether it's Zoom or you know Skype, whatever it might be. And then the Knicks meet with him in some capacity. And then he takes some time to think about it, and he probably takes five seconds. That might actually be generous, but he then doesn't say anything because they want to let it, you know, mellow out. He really thought he he thought so 
so much about what he wanted to do with his future. And he just ultimately decided on this location. So I think it's just more about not getting dinged for tampering because last thing we need is Leon Rose losing another second round pick for the tampering penalty. Uh, Amino F, Jeremy, is a D'Lo for Randall swap realistic? feel like D'Lo would fit better next to Brunson and RJ than Randall. Don't love if it's Brunson and D'Lo. I mean, yeah, I just don't think that the... I don't think that the Timberwolves are loving that. I think they... It seems that they might want a five to play next to Cat. And uh, that's not really Randall. I get that why they would fit because a stretch big and makes sense on the offensive end. Defensively, I'm not super sure. I just think it might be a challenge. Uh, Asfand Yar Jandua, thank you so much for the super chat contribution. How do you feel about Brunson taking those other meetings? Should we be worried or is it just to avoid tampering? Like I said, I think it's really just uh, it's really just tampering focused. Uh, the, I mean, the Heat don't really have it'd be hard for them to do anything, and. That just seems like, how do we find a way to just let sleeping dogs lie? And I wouldn't be surprised um, if what happens is that the Knicks wanted Jalen Brunson to go to the Mavs so that they wouldn't leave feeling super butthurt about how this all unfolded because there's a rumor, a report rather, that the Mavs were upset the Knicks came to watch um, Brunson play that in game one. Uh, so that's the one prevailing thought like, Hey, let's try to smooth this out. Work with us. We'll work with you. He heard you out. He made his decision. Let's just put this in the past. Juan Cruz. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, love, love, love your chats. Thank you. Juan. Uh, our Knicks fans going to be crushed by the heat again. Uh, not unless they can clear significant cap space. And I don't see how they do that. Again, it, again it's possible that they find a way. Don't get me wrong. It's just a challenge. It's very much a challenge. So I think it's more just circumstantial. Let's get in there. Let's take the meeting. And it was a third party that we can get. It works for us. Steve Savale. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Do you see a bunch of first round picks and some pieces enough to get Donovan Mitchell? Uh, probably not now. I still think the jazz are going to try to build with him. He's still not quite in that territory of a trade candidate because he has three years of team control. It's usually two years of team control or, uh, for players who are like, you know, under the age of 30 or early 30s. Otherwise, if you're in your early to mid 30s and you have multiple years in your deal, the, it changes a bit. So I don't think there's any amount. I mean, listen, if the Knicks offered however many other picks they could do without violating the Stepien rule, then I'm sure the Jazz would latch on. It's just I don't think the Knicks would be wise to do that. And I think the Knicks know that, too. FM lag. Knicks being so publicly involved with Murray, uh, Hawks had to pay a huge premium on unprotected picks for him. Actually glad the Knicks didn't go too deep. This is the one thing that I do want to say about DeJounte Murray. If you look at the reporting, it seems that the phrasing for it was that the Knicks have had interest, in, have had interest or um, it doesn't, it didn't strike me as the Knicks are interested. They're a huge front runner, all this. It seemed to me like a leverage play, but what I was really hoping for was that we would get a report where it was, are the Knicks interested in DeJounte Murray right now? And it would not also shock me if a reason why they were floated. It, it's true. I know this as well. And I, I'm not doubting the reports because they are accurate. That that's it's accurate. The Knicks have, it did have interest in Murray, but I think it was a while ago. And I just wish that kind of had been, more explained but i think a big reason why the knicks are doing that as well by keeping their name in the ring it's it's basically the team version of hey let's try not to tamper like no no, we, we weren't in on brunson because we were also in on murray until the last second and then he took these meetings and it worked out perfectly so i think it's as much to kind of get the knicks to cover their tracks as it is for brunson to cover his and by floating their names now it was much more of See, they're just exploring all their options. Murray didn't work out. We pivoted. We didn't get Ivy either, so we pivoted to Brunson. Duran, visual variant. Thank you for the super chat. Possibility of signing Mo Bamba to replace Noel, or do you think Sims will be the backup? I think Sims will be the backup, just based on the fact that I think in the last 23 games of the season, I was 
the games that Sims played after the all-star break, he averaged like 19 minutes a game. So I could just see him basically playing 20 minutes or so, 21, 22. Mitch plays 26 to 28, something like that. It'd be nice if the Knicks could go small at certain points, but I don't think Tibbs is necessarily going to do that. So I would just, you know, Assuming the Knicks go use cap space and renounce their TPEs, which feels like almost a given, I would then sign Jericho Sims to a three to four year contract minimum. If they'd done it when they were above the cap, then it'd only be two years at max, uh, not max contract, maximum years. So do that. You get some nice cheap labor from Jericho Sims in a backup role for a few years. That's pretty nice. So I, you know, I just, I don't think Bamba is in the cards. I think he makes a lot more sense elsewhere, just not necessarily here. Philip Spatola, what would a package around Mitch and Randall for Aiton look like? What would need to go in? So it can't be Randall. It's similar to the Brunson thing. It's still base your compensation where even if uh, Aiton's making a max, which is now I think from 30.5 to $30.9 million, the most the Knicks could probably send back in that situation is like, 19 20 million dollars randall's making more than that so he wouldn't work you'd have to send randall pretty much for someone who's already under contract or to a team that has complete cap space otherwise it doesn't work so with eight and it's a different story it'd have to be other parts moving with mitch it could like i said you know you could move mitch into a trade player exception that was created by trading deandre eight into the knicks um you could do it for Crowder, although I don't see that happening because I don't see Crowder in a backup role unless they, again, like if they're moving Julius Randle, then it makes a little bit more sense. But Obi Toppin's in a backup role because Crowder's probably more of a four at this point. Uh, and if he's not, if he's closer to playing the three, then he's imposing on RJ unless RJ shifts down to the two. And I don't think he does. So it's anything with Aiton is not going to have Randle attached to it. At least it shouldn't. Uh, what's the latest on, uh, excuse me, Fern Rodriguez. Thank you for the super chat. What's the latest on Zion? Last I read, New Orleans is going to offer a max with injury incentives. Zion to New York sign trade Zion threatening to take the one year rookie extension. So if Zion did a sign and trade, it would be next year. We'd get to deal with base year compensation all over again. I would imagine he'll just take a nice juicy contract extension. Wouldn't put it past him. It's great money. He can always force a trade later. The Pelicans are in a, in a good spot. They also don't have to trade him unless, you know, if he really made it difficult, then sure. But then at the same time, if the Pelicans they might not be too thrilled that the Knicks are the ones who are trying to weasel their way in there. So I'd put Zion out of out of sight, out of mind for a bit. Uh, Chief Boy R. Could we trade Randall and Cam for Miles Bridges from a money perspective? Same thing. Can't do it like with DeAndre Ayton base your compensation doesn't really work that way. You'd have to find a way to switch it up. So like you could do Randall for Hayward, but then you can't do cam for miles because miles would be making a lot of money, but also like you wouldn't keep miles bridges and bring in Julius Randall, but I don't even see the Hornets moving off of Hayward to get Randall unless they lost miles bridges, but doesn't sound like they will. So, um, Money perspective, no, that does not work. Sage of the Knicks path. Thank you so much for the super chat contribution. Are you saying it's Zion? Are we clearing the books for a Zion move? No, I am not saying that, unfortunately. I think he's pretty well set, and that'll be the case for him, which doesn't. It's, again, New Orleans, it's a fun, fun team. Uh, from XJ, everything they do feels moot if Randall's still here. He's going to press every key player's value, Brunson, RJ, Randall himself. Yes. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. If Randall's still here, I won't be happy. But I also know that I will find a way to talk myself into it because what other choice do we have if he's immovable, right? Like, I would still be upset. I still would be cynical that things will turn around. But he'll if he's here, he's here. So, I, you know, again, at what point is the cost of moving him with picks too great it's a backwards move like 
it all, but it all depends on what else the Knicks do. That's the thing. So uh, XJ, let's we'll revisit this probably either if it's not tomorrow, then uh, sometime next week. But I hear you. It just feels like it would be nice to make a change, but it's easier said than done. Uh, FM lag. Why do you hate Taj, Jeremy? I love Taj. In fact, I was willing to give him the room exception in the Jeremy Cohen plan. So uh, take that. But I do think that he would be best suited if he's coming back, obviously, as the third big off the bench. So if something happens to Mitch, if something happens to Sims, I mean, granted, I would I'd still love to see Obi get more minutes in there, have Randall be a small ball five. I think Taj really is a break glass in case of an emergency player, but it's Tibbs and we know his style. So I wouldn't put it past him. Vincent Russo, thank you for the super chat contribution. Are all these moves getting picks just ammo for Don? Uh, can we keep players and send picks? What type of trade would you do for him? How does he fit with Jalen Brunson? Well, he doesn't fit great with Jalen Brunson from point of attack defense standpoint. Perimeter game's not great. Uh, both pretty short guards. Don't necessarily love it. Um, but Andrew, could you throw that back up? Because I just there are a few questions. I don't want to lose track of it. Um, thank you very much. So the thing with moving picks and with, with Donovan Mitchell, like unless you're, if the Knicks signed Jalen Brunson, you'd have to think Brunson's on the way out for Donovan Mitchell. But then are the Knicks doing that it, at a certain point? And I know this may seem crazy and I'm not saying it's, it is this way, but the Knicks will have to ask themselves if down the line Brunson and picks are more valuable than Donovan Mitchell. And we'll see. We will see based on the contract. If Brunson's playing well, then might be better suited finding other talent not at the point guard position. Um, maybe someone who can better complement uh, Brunson. I mean, in, if we're talking about how if Ian Begley's saying that the their concerns about the defensive fit between Fournier and Brunson, I can't imagine what Brunson and Donovan Mitchell would be for a team moving forward. It just it doesn't feel great to me um but again like for me jalen brunson it's it's raising the floor but it's also if you need it if you need him to be this there's a chance that he can be good salary filler in a trade but we also saw how this past offseason has gone from the season beforehand where a lot of these players somehow lost value and that's not good and we don't want that to happen so brunson would certainly need to prove himself in order to be good salary filler so thank you for the question, Vincent. Dirty Dancer, why does Andrew hate my questions? That's a great question, Dirty Dancer. Uh, I would say he appreciates your questions by throwing up why he hates your question. But um, honestly, that's between Andrew and his God. Can't answer it for him. Uh, from Andrew which I will imagine is not Andrew Claudio. Thank you for the super chat contribution. Your thoughts on idea of starting Grimes for defense alongside Jalen Brunson and making Fournier our sixth man quick can then be defensive stopper bench logical pairings. I did Matt. What I mean, is Derek Rose still here? Is Cam Reddish still here? I just think that they feel they can move Evan Fournier out and they're fine with it, that, that they would prefer to do that. But you know, again, I, I you can you can find shooters similar to Brunson, similar to Fournier, on the open market. They won't be as good playmaking. They may not be as talented as as um, Brunson is, but actually as as Fournier is because he can also do a little bit more pull up shooting than someone who could just be found off the street might. But it's the sort of thing where if you're moving him to a sixth man role on this team, I just don't I don't think it works super well. I think you have to get him elsewhere at that point and. Hopefully it's Dallas. Hopefully there's a sign and trade that can work with the two. But I, I just, I'm fine with uh, with Grimes being with Brunson. I'd also like to see IQ with Brunson. I think that's the other option. If you're keeping Rose, or if you want to try running Deuce out there with the second unit, like certainly an option. I wouldn't hate having Fournier here. I just think probably better off moving on and finding a way to move off of his deal. But then if you're above the cap next year. Um, Fournier does come in handy as an ex technically expiring salary. So we'll see. But uh, preferences for him to go. Uh, Sean Christmas. What's the possibility to trade for Ananobi? I think it's probably low. There was a report that the Blazers didn't bite on Ananobi because 
the Raptors wanted um, the seventh pick overall and an additional first. It's a lot. That's a lot. So to me, it feels like if the if the Raptors get Gobert, that's where it makes sense. I just don't think it works between the Knicks and the Raptors based on that. Just not not great. I, so I, I wouldn't count on it happening personally. Um, Adam Leibowitz, thank you so much for the super chat contribution. I uh, thought same thing with Aiton. Also wondering if Phoenix is a possible destination for Randall. Seems plausible. Paul and Booker could be into him. Is Randall possible in Aiton sign and trade? How might it work? Uh, so again, it's not possible based on base year compensation. It's it's a challenge. You'd have to find salary that does match, which I think it would it'd be like Sharich, Crowder, Cam, and Payne. Might get you close, but uh, it might that might do the trick. You got, I think. A little over 10 or 11 for Crowder. Sharich is 9. And then Payne, I want to say, is like a little over 6. So, that yeah, that should do it. But, I, you know, they have to worry about paying Cam Reddish. There's Cam Reddish. Cam, Cameron Johnson. So, um, possible, sure. Likely, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's also, if you're a contender like the Suns and you were just you want a little bit more consistency, good consistency that Randall provides. So that's what I would say. JG is Macri's favorite player. Duncan Robinson going to be a Nick LOL. No, because I will believe that a heat player is on the Knicks when I see it. And uh, I'm not buying it. I just, the last trade between the two teams was when Pat Riley went to Miami. So uh, I'm a little dubious of that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to quickly just look to see if we have any, Late breaking news that I did not see that might be relevant. Um, no, nothing. We move on. Tony Curry, are you aware Randall is a trade kicker in place? I am. Yes, it's $11.5 million. The Knicks are the ones who would be paying it. It would be spread out over four years. His cap hit next year would increase to, I want to say, $27 million. So, uh, yes, I am indeed aware of it, but I, but he could always waive it if he wanted to find the situation that was right for him. So yeah, drew P thank you for the super chat contribution. Lowry Brunson trade would put Dallas in crazy tax. Sure. I'm not, I guess you mean Miami cause I'm not sure how Lowry would get there per se, but even if it were Dallas, yes. Like adding $30 million in salary, you'd have to trade it to, you'd have to you'd do like Tim Hardaway jr. And, Dwight Powell, just as an example, but then you'd be in the same position, but then you add Brunson to the fold at over $25 million. It's a lot. So yeah, they'd be pretty taxed out, which just don't really see it. Don't see it happen. Um, Juan Cruz. Thank you again for super chat contribution. So if JB doesn't lead us to the promised land, what's the next move? Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, if we're talking the promised land, I, I still don't think Brunson is the guy and I've been a, a staunch uh I've been staunchly in favor of bringing him in it's more just like raising your four getting better uh the next move I don't even know what's happening tomorrow Han so uh we can circle back to this maybe at the <laughs> at the next uh cream but in the meantime uh, you know just just get better as a team run more pick and roll with Jalen Brunson assuming he's here space the floor a little bit better Get the best point guard you've had since Stefan Marbury. Feels like a good next step. Logical next step. One that will probably be clowned on by people who are not Knicks fans and some Knicks fans too. But um, I'll be happy if he signs. At the end of the day, I'll I'll go to sleep at night knowing that. And I hope you will too. Um, Dwayne Piper. Who do you think starts at the two guard? Because Brunson Fournier would be terrible defensively. Yes, indeed. Again, I think most people would gravitate towards Grimes. I do think there is a compelling argument for IQ, especially if Rose is still here or if you have Deuce. I understand staggering as well. I'd be happy with either of them. I Again, like even Grimes off ball, super low usage guy who just comes in, does his job, and that's great. But the other thing with Tibbs, he, so he, Tibbs trusts young players. I think that does get lost in the fray, but I don't know if Tibbs is willing to start Grimes in year two. Year two for a younger player 
often feels much more like, Hey, let's, uh, let's get you into the rotation, right? Like I, I've, I've said about, I've, I've talked about before, and I don't mean this as a one-to-one comparison or comparison of talent or anything of the sort, but in terms of the role that Tibbs gave Jimmy Butler, an older rookie, it was barely playing just garbage time, situational minutes. That was Grimes until he broke through with, uh, around COVID, uh, season two for Jimmy Butler was okay. You're in the rotation. Season three was, yeah, you're getting more starts and season four, actually season three might've been, you're a starter. Season four was the all-star campaign. So, uh, Andrew, just don't tweet. You've heard it here. Jeremy's saying Quentin Grimes is an all-star, not what I'm saying at all, but that sort of role and how he gravitates from one step to the next. That's why I think IQ might be better suited because he is entering year three and he's just got more experience under his belt. And I would trust him next to Jalen Brunson, but I understand why people don't think that the two would work well. I think the length and wingspan that quickly has would, would match up just fine, especially when they close. That would be, that would be important. Uh, Dom Cappuccini. Thank you so much for the super chat. Let's say we whiff on Jalen Brunson. What is the best plan C in your opinion that would allow them to still come away looking competent? Use that noodle, Jeremy. Mm. I mean, you'd think Murray would be the pivot, but he's gone. Are you trying to shake down the Pacers and say, we know you need to get rid of Brogdon more than we need Brogdon? Don't love it. Uh, Sexton, Colin Sexton, are you willing to go that high? If you're the Knicks, try to pry him loose. Maybe. I guess Sexton would be the plan C in this case. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I don't think it'd be D'Lo, although I would imagine he wants a change of ce- a change of scenery. So we'll see. But I'll say Sexton. Vincent Russo, uh, thank you for the super chat. And uh, of course, happy to answer. I, I love all these questions. You guys are so awesome. Really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Andrew I, and John, we were talking about this earlier. So this is actually really cool. We broke a million downloads this year, in the year 2022, which um, is just so awesome. The support you guys have given us has just been incredible, especially this month. I mean, it all throughout all throughout but like this month too just we're we're doing some really awesome things we're we're really proud of and uh we're nothing without you guys listening so um thank you and thank you for the questions um so yeah next one what we got what's what's going on andrew what do we have darren hood question jeremy what else do you think the knicks may have in store for free agency other than point guard uh, so Darren, I don't know if you heard earlier, but I had a theory about in the event that, um, they do create more cap space. They could find a way to get Deandre Ayton and, you know, like the Knicks could sign Mitchell Robinson. I'm not suggesting pairing the two together or having one back up the other. They could sign him and they could trade him as part of a sign and trade where probably be two sign and trades that then kind of get lumped into what feels like one transaction, but I think that would be the biggest thing. And then the long, long, long shot, which I'm not counting on, but I might as well just say it like what, what's, what's going through Bradley Beal's head. Is he just, he's going to make a lot of money no matter where he goes. Again, I don't see it. The crazier things have happened. I'm, I'm at the point where I just like, I can't count things out based on how the Knicks are operating. I just can't, I feel like I can't do a lot of it. Like I'm glad the, that we've turned the page on DeJounte Murray because I didn't think they were going to do it, but I'm glad we can just rule that out right now. Uh, Jay live. Thank you so much for the super chat contribution. I heard Luke and the Mavs did what they had to do to appease KP and get his value up enough to trade. Brunson was there. Coincidentally, could that be the plan for redacted? It could be. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's as Mike Bassick talked about with John on a recent podcast basically was Christoph's. We can't move you. You're immovable. We are struggling. And they found a way to get Spencer Dinwiddie and Davis Bertans. And it worked for them. They made the Western conference finals. Is that a great haul? Of course not. The idea of Porzingis is far better than the idea of Dinwiddie and Bertans, but 
if you can, it's, it's all, it's all about how do you ease Julius into the fold? Because if there are more mouths to feed, how do you tell him that less is more when he is the one who could say, well, like I got all NBA, you didn't. So what, like, why should I defer? Then there's the prevailing question of, well, uh, is Jalen Brunson going to make more money than Julius Randle did on this contract? Is RJ Barrett going to make more money on his next contract than Julius Randle? Interesting prevailing thoughts. So yeah, you know, I, if he's here, it's all right, let's just, let's put it past us. Let's move on. Let's turn the page. Let's try to get his value up more so we can set ourselves up in a better position. That's the big thing. So um, that could easily be the plan. That could definitely be the plan because right now, I just don't think it looks great. And I, I've maintained its neutral value and I think I'm wrong on that. And hand up, that's most certainly on me if that's the case. But, you know, if there's like, if the the other thing on the other hand is like, okay, well, if the Blazers have Eric Bledsoe, for example, and his money's just sitting there, are they that anti uh, Julius Randle? They wouldn't trade a player who's not even in the rotation. So we'll see. It's it's debatable, but unless there's a huge big trade with, like I said, Rose and Randall for Beal, and I just who knows, uh, which I doubt, but we'll see. I just I think it seems he might be back. Brooklyn Reptiles, would you do Bill Simmons hypothetical trade of Westbrook and a 2027 first for Randall, Fournier, and Rose? I wouldn't, in the sense of I still think the Knicks are trying to clear cap space to do something. But uh, again, it's like, I, I understand the idea of, yeah, you just John Wall, Russell Westbrook, and you get rid of the pick and all that. It, it just, it all depends on how the Knicks are also set up. Uh, if they plan on being over the cap, under the cap next year, it's, it's a loaded question. I've kind of been dying on the hill that I wouldn't. So um, purely for agenda purposes, I would not. Uh, Paris Duggar, thank you so much for the super chat contribution. Randall at 27 minutes will be close to all-star level again. Paris, I don't know if, if, uh, you've seen it, but Tom Thibodeau, he works as players. They play more than 27 minutes, especially the starters. So it would be great maybe to have him, I don't know, closer to 30, 32. That gives OB 16 to 18 minutes. I just don't think that's enough, but. I just 27 is low. It likely means that Obi would be getting 21, which would be great. But that's that just feels low to me, unfortunately. It's going to be interesting how he balances them. The hope is that, yeah, I mean, they could get crushed on the glass if Randall and Obi are playing together. But you would hope that Obi near three and maybe Randall deferring a little bit more. Because here's the other thing I keep wondering about. Was Randall who he was last year because he just didn't trust any of the players around him? And if that's the case, does he trust the players around him more now? And if he does, does that lead to him backing off a bit and being a better player and a smarter player to be determined? But I just I don't think he's going to go as low as 27. That, that just feels low to me, unfortunately. Um, XJ. Jay, would you have done a combo of five first, first swaps for Murray? I think Murray is a young star and cost controlled for two years. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it, especially if you get Jalen Brunson. I understand the logic of getting Murray in the building, but I am much more in the mindset of Knicks have the picks, understand why they would use them, but would prefer not to use them right now. And I'm sure that some of you might be thinking like, well, then what the hell are the picks for? Like, isn't this why you do it? Sure, it is. It's just personal preference. I, I think you you can wait a little bit longer. It goes back to the opportunity cost. Brunson for money or Murray for everything i mean basically what and what's your move after that you you could try to get murray's value up more you could try to get brunson's value up more if they're both here uh, but it's just it's it's harder down the line to parse out how you go from good to great with the hawks i sort of get it for them a little bit more than i would for the knicks but even still it's just that's a lot to give up for him he's, he's good he's really good but it's just a lot Adam Leibowitz, thank you for another Super Chat contribution. 
Curious why Miles Turner isn't mentioned as a possibility more. Seems like a perfect fit for Tibbs on D and for the rest of the roster on O, given three point percentage. So Turner isn't being mentioned more because I don't think anyone really is biting to the way that the Pacers want. Uh, defensively, yeah, he 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 blocks a ton of shots, a ton of them. Um, he's not a good rebounder, which is something the Knicks really like. The three point percentage is not great. You know, there was a, a hot moment where. I fell for the mirage this past season and then he just came back down to earth. And I, st I still wonder if like if miles Turner hadn't gone nuclear in one of those games, that he went like five for eight from three, what Knicks fans might uh, just generally think of him. Uh, Cause I know with Brunson, he didn't do super well. And a lot of fans were like, I oh, know did he didn't do well against the Knicks both times. Not interested. And there's like guys have, off games guys just maybe aren't good when that happens or guys are just weirdly good when maybe they shouldn't be. So I don't think that Turner is really the type of rim runner that the Knicks want. Who's kind of like Turner just might be parked out on the perimeter and that's not really how they run the offense. So I don't think he'd be the best fit, but it is interesting that he's rumored to be staying and pulled off the market because I just don't think people, Teams want the Pacers players, the, the veterans that are there. I mean, it's amazing that Malcolm Brogdon, the Wizards and the Knicks, their 10th and 11th picks were floated in the conversations of Brogdon and neither team traded 10 or 11 for Brogdon because he was never worth it. And the Wizards just said, screw it. Um, we're going to get Monte Morris instead. Brooklyn Reptiles, any chance of Randall Reddish plus four first for shy? Not this offseason. Yeah, just uh, it'd be more than that. It'd be more, a lot more, because you're getting five years of team control for Shea Gilgis Alexander. Like we just we haven't seen five years of team control being traded uh, on a second contract. That's crazy high. Um, so yeah, I, I think it would probably cost everything the Knicks have. Slacker Hero, uh, thank you so much for your super chat contribution. Hey, Jeremy, does Evan work in a sign and trade with Aiton if, uh, if Randall's salary is also moved? Thanks for all your hard work, man. Uh, well, thank you so much. So uh, Randall's salary, forget it. That doesn't work out. But with uh, Fournier, yes, it's the same thing as with Brunson. If Aiton is making like $28.7 million or higher, then you could do Aiton for, um, for Fournier. But if it's lower than that, you can't do it. It doesn't work. Have to find another way around it. So um you, you could also, you could do the reverse, but you can't, right? So for example, if uh, I had talked about like, okay, well, what if you did Fournier for uh, Brunson and then you did Aiton into a uh, into the cap space, get a TPE for Phoenix, then trade Mitch into the TPE and that works. You can't do the reverse of it entirely. Like you could do what you're suggesting, Slacker Hero, of Aiton and Fournier, but you couldn't do Brunson for Mitch because a sign and trade for um, if you if you saw Jalen Brunson cap or no cap talked about how if you do a sign and trade with a player who's a free agent to a team like the Mavs that are over the tax apron, they can't do it because they'd be hard capped and you can't go above the hard cap. You can't go above the tax apron if you're hard capped. So uh, it does work with Phoenix based on their salaries and the, the financial commitments, but it doesn't work with Dallas. So that's why I think the Knicks are really trying to figure something out where if we can't move Evan Fournier out elsewhere, let's try to do it here. Let him be uh, expendable salary, essentially the continuous soup that the Mavs couldn't get with Jalen Brunson. And then let's maybe focus on Aiden. But um, part of me also is thinking are the Knicks trying to throw people off the scent by plugging the, hey, we're bringing back Mitchell Robinson rumors. I don't know. Maybe that's just false hope because I, I don't love paying big money for centers, but I would be understanding of this, especially because I wonder if it comes with an R.J. Barrett discount on the next extension because DeAndre Ayton and R.J. Barrett both share Bill Duffy as an agent. So I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, Mike Salas. How do unlikely incentives work in a sign and trade? Is the incoming slash outgoing trade values wonky? Could that also help clear more cap space for Aiton? Unlikely bonuses don't 
count towards the cap hit. Likely bonuses do. So um, it shouldn't count too much. It doesn't really do a whole lot for clearing money for Aiton. It, it could do a little bit, but uh, probably not a ton. So it's a, it's a good question. It just It's not going to play a huge factor because the cap hit is likely not going to be impacted. So thank you, Mike. What do we got? What are we up to? All right. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. How are you? Hi. So I'm going to leave this up to you and produce this live on air, if that's okay. Um, By all means. So we are at an hour, and it is up. If you got nowhere to be, you want to keep going. We got some super chats. Of course, we're going to read them. Uh, we've got 643 people live Ooh. in the chat right now. Wow. Thank so you. So shout out to all of you. Um, if you're down to keep going, I'm down to keep going. I am absolutely down to keep going. Listen, Let's do it. Where did we last night was great. Tomorrow's gonna be great. What's another however long we we get rolling? Okay, cool. The game. Then the uh, I'm not fucking leaving. The show goes on. That's the line from <laughs> yes. from what's it called from Wolf of Wall Street. Yep. Um, I'll echo what Jeremy said. By the way, it's more that so the one million downloads in six months is uh, unreal. To yep. be completely honest, um, I I put it on Twitter today. We also. Uh, jumped back into the top 30 for basketball podcasts in America. We're ahead of CJ McCollum, uh, a bunch of other locked on pods. We're ahead of uh, uh, Shaq, I think, the big Shaq podcast, whatever his pod is. Um, there's also the iTunes top 200, which we're now in the top 168. I think we're 167 or 166. 166? Yeah. We're six, we're three ahead of Francesa, which. As somebody who grew up on Mike and the Mad Dog was the I, I don't mean to make this too self-serious. And I'm also kind of stalling because I'm looking for the next super chat question. But transparency is good. I, I like just it. thank you, everybody, for for all of this going in and looking at, at these numbers every day to then see, you know, some progress. I want you, all of you to share in this, you know, um, we're not here without you. So thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll get to celebrate episode 500 tomorrow live with you here on the KFS YouTube channel. Okay, here's your next question. And All right. Thank you Andrew. Johnny Chiba, thank you so much for the super chat contribution. Hey now JC. Oh, we got some we got some emojis going on here. Let me let me read them out. Ice cream cone, waves, man dancing. Anyway, we don't get JB question mark. Placate my love that's out uh YC up how great is Brock <laughs> Bricks, Brock Aller. Uh, what free agent best fit and your feasible dream starting five? Hashtag Nick's on crack. All right. I would say uh again, if we Nick's don't get Jalen Brunson pivot to someone like Colin Sexton, and then potentially, you know, call up the Pacers and call their bluff, maybe call up Minnesota. The latter two don't really excite me. I know that there's also, again, the Tyus Jones angle. He's just, he's not a starting point guard. If he, I'll hold that thought until tomorrow, depending on what happens to him. Anyways, uh, if he even signs tomorrow, uh, I guess dream starting five. If we're talking this season. But I, Brunson, Yes. I hate the defense that I'm just about to say. I hate it so much. All right, Bronson, Beal, Barrett, Aiton, and uh, Beal, Barrett, Toppin, and Aiton. Like, again, the sequence of how I would do that is Fournier for Brunson, find a way to sign and trade Aiton, send out Mitch, and then Randall, Rose, and, and Picks, and also probably a first-round pick for Aiton in return. So, uh yeah yeah that's that's it uh juan cruz thank you for super chat what's starting lineup for opening day yeah uh, i'll i'll go brunson quickly barrett randall ayton let's be adventurous uh john malika hey john uh john just did an awesome pod with him and uh, alex Trateros. so you guys should check that out i think we i retweeted it next film school retweeted it um next jets etc Really great stuff. Um, Rail and five picks for Cat, who says no. I would imagine. 
I mean, my first my first instinct is the wolves, but at the same time, do they want to pay Carl Anthony Towns the supermax starting in 2025, where he's making 35 percent of the salary cap? That's a lot. It's a lot for a team that is. I mean, he's in his prime, but is Anthony Edwards more their their guy moving forward? It's an interesting question. So, uh, I also I personally don't love a player like cat as your starting five would want him as more of a four with, with how he works. Um, I like cat as a player, just schematically. He's, he's not my favorite, uh, for, at least for my team. Uh, Andre Barry. Thank you for the super chat is OG still on the block. I think he would be a perfect fit next to RJ and Brunson. What would it take to get the deal done? Mentioned OG and Anobi a little bit earlier, just how the blazers didn't even get him because he was the seventh pick over. They were, they're were saying, Trade the seventh pick overall, an additional first round pick, and salary. It's a lot. So if that's what the Raptors are looking for, for a player like OG Ananobi, who's a very good player, then they might be better off looking towards the Rudy Gobert angle of it. Or um, maybe it's a three team deal. And uh, Jakob Pearl, he's he's got to go somewhere. That's the other thing. You know, originally I thought, what if Noel goes into the Jazz trade player exception? And that's not going to happen, most likely. So the other thought I had was if Gobert is traded for OG Ananobi and for Gary Trent Jr., Pirtle fits right into that exception that the Jazz have. He would make a lot of sense there. And not just for the reason we're all thinking of, but just would make a lot of sense. Knicks Boulevard. Brunson played in a five-out offense. The Knicks don't run that at all. Him and Fournier defensively is a tough watch. The lack of offensive creativity from Tibbs what concerns me, not the money. I think that's totally fair. It is another reason why I don't love having Randall moving forward. It's also why I still wonder about DeAndre Ayton because he, he spaced the floor a bit in terms of he's got a really nice face up game uh, and he can, he can shoot from mid range. So it's not like he's just in the dunker spot serving as a rim runner. That's why I keep wondering, is there more to what's going on with this? And, uh, but I agree. I don't, you know, the Knicks don't have to play five out. They can play, four out one in like most teams do, but Brunson just should be a little bit more eager to shoot threes. I think his numbers are good, but the sample size should be a bit bigger. So if he is really good from pulling up uh, from longer mid range, if you can stretch the floor a little bit more to get beyond the three point line, which, you know, if you look at shot quality, which is a great uh, source online they, they talk about teams and their, the quality of their shots. The Knicks were originally a really good shot quality team because they were taking the right shots. They just weren't hitting them. So hopefully Brunson would adapt to that nature of uh, quality shots. Uh, Parrish Duggar, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Randall and Tibbs were humbled. There'll be a big change. I, I hope. Listen, I hope that everyone this offseason is learning from their shortcomings. Because if you're not learning from where you went wrong... You're just going to repeat the same mistakes. So I'm glad that there's a time to hit reset. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Or if you're listening to this on Thursday, we'll see what happens today. But yeah, I think everyone just needs time to clear their heads and get back to work. And the best teams, the, their players made sacrifices from the top to the bottom. Got to make sacrifices in some way. And yeah, I, I would hope that Randall and I would hope that Tibbs do the same thing. And it's up to Leon Rose to put the talent around them as well. So hopefully, hopefully there's more. Um, Therno Fakelos, salute from Greece, repping the Knicks at 2.30 a.m. here. Wow, thank you so much. I'm sorry if I uh, mispronounced your name. Uh, happy for not getting Murray. Heard a lot about him personality-wise. Andrew, uh, it's like heart on fire haircut, by the way. Uh, yeah, it is a great haircut, Andrew. Sorry, I didn't know. It um, looks wonderful. Uh, interesting about personality wise, I hadn't really heard much about it, but I'll, I'll if something occurred, I'll, I'll certainly take your word for it. But, um, yeah, I, I, like I'm not upset. He's a good player. Another team wanted him more and they needed him more because Trey young is a superstar and he needed some help. And I don't know how else he was going to get that because if DeJounte Murray is off the market and they're not doing a sign and trade for someone like Aiton, or if they're not getting someone like Gobert, when's the next star becoming available? 
I uh, I really don't know. It would be tough. Uh, just quickly looking. Nope. Nothing. Nothing there. Cool. We continue. Jason M. Did you see the Hawks? Oh, hold on. Go back. Thank you. Did you see the Hawks decline Knox, the qualifying offer? Pour one out for Knox. And now Fizdale has a front office job with the Jazz. LOL. Did not see about Knox. Makes sense. If they'd given him the qualifying offer, he would have accepted it. He's much better as an unrestricted free agent if you are Atlanta. As a reminder for those of you who may not know, if you if a team extends a qualifying offer and you decline it, you become a restricted free agent. If the team does not extend a qualifying offer, you are an unrestricted free agent. But that whole era is just um, a fever dream that entire season. But uh, shout out to Fizdale for having uh, good friends in high places. I'm, I'm happy for him that he, he's landing on his feet in Utah. Just um, I, 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 I wish falling up could be quite that easy, but it is for him. Good for David. Good for Fizz. Together. We're all in this together. Um, I don't have an axe to grind with him. He's, he seemed like a good guy. Uh, Matt Magsig. Is this... Uh... Oh, doesn't have a comment. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, well, thank you for the Super Chat contribu contribution, Matt. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Um, so, yeah. Let's see where we're going next. Uh, just gave the same Super Chat twice, Andrew says. Well, wow. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Matt. Uh, forgotten NYC. Thank you for the super chat. Now you guys are just awesome. Thank you. Just spitballing. What is RJ realistic trade value? Ooh, gosh. Um, I hate that this question was posed, but I will answer it. I will answer it. It's uh, you're looking at a more inefficient player. One who's also had to play with Julius, his entire career with Mitch's entire career. Not a lot of space. Well, outside of the, I should say the second season, obviously Mitch was hurt for some time. I think he's someone where similar with Brunson, just a little bit more space to operate would be great. So, you know, it's essentially RJ's in a situation where he's getting paid in a year and teams may not know what to make of him. So I think the potential is certainly high enough, but when you're trying to figure out what your dollar system is going to be, unless you're a team that's, projects to be over the cap and you don't have to worry as much you're below the luxury tax like to that team rj is probably very much worth the risk just a matter of what they have what they're willing to give up so um yeah i mean i don't see him getting dealt but it's probably for Knicks would probably want something like porzingis like what he yield yielded um, maybe a little bit more i mean porzingis made the all-star team granted but i'm someone who loves wings i think you have to have a wing versus a, a great big or a great guard that's really what's most important to me um or just got the potential just has to keep showing it uh jessica hey jessica uh jessica cruz elsener thank you so much for the super chat mazel tough guys you deserve all the success and more here's to three million plus downloads over the next six months so what are your top three likely randall trades that could happen if we get jalen brunson and if we don't well i've given two Spurs one's out. Uh, the I'll say the Jazz. I'll say the Blazers. And then... Um, I don't feel good about saying the Kings, so I'll say the Hawks if there were a three-team deal. But then, no, I don't want to say the Hawks because that's that's even messier of a spacing fit now that they have Murray. So um, if something crazy happened with the Hornets, but I just don't think that that's the case. Um... I'll say uh, through the list. It's got to be a team that's like on the cusp and wants to do things. Um, Not a lot. Oh, this is just not fun. I'll just, just find Dallas. Dallas. That, yeah, sure. Have him go west. Tom Romano, ready for a bombshell? Brunson won't sign tomorrow because it's all part of the tampering facade, probably over the weekend. Maybe, yeah. It, it could also be that he takes the Mavs meeting before free agency starts, if, if, assuming that's allowed because he's a member of the Mavs and they can still meet with him. And then the Heat and then the Knicks takes a few hours, gets some dinner, uh, ponders what he'll his first purchase will be now that he's a, uh, you know, work, but now that he'll earn nine figures. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's... 
it's definitely possible it waits till the weekend. I really hope for selfish reasons, both from the stress and because I would like to have it done on the live stream as we're recording that he signs tomorrow. But uh, you could wait. I just, I don't know. You guys kind of fly off the shelves and teams want to just move on. Uh, the one JP, thank you for the super chat contribution. Any role players, uh, any role player guys you could see the Knicks going after on short term deals? Like I said, I think if Cam Reddish is moved, someone like Kyle Anderson might make sense. Maybe, you know, that type of of player, a guy who might also be want to be on a more prove it deal that they don't have. Like, I mean, I'm not saying Malik Monk, but like think that type of mindset where, yeah, I mean, he he joined for less money to join a contender for sure. But someone who is happy earning a little over five million dollars and gets a solid backup role. And can try to hit the market again next year. So uh, I'll go with Anderson. Trish D, thank you for the super chat contribution. Andrew, why is D Rose always on your hit list to play the kids? He runs that bench unit flawlessly and has great respect in that locker room. Andrew, when did I hate D Rose? I think does Trish mean me? Because I've certainly said that I love D Rose, love him here, but I think the time has come, especially if you bring Brunson in, where you have to ship Rose out. It's solely that if anything yeah. the i mean you don't honestly have to trade d rose at this point i know you would be okay with it because then quickly could take the backup point guard role but if the goal is to win games next year and you're fine with quickly playing the two then that's fine also let's just be all transparent and realistic about this Derek rose isn't playing the full season next year so if you want quickly to play backup point guard minutes Guess what he's going to do for the half a season that Derrick Rose might not be here? Play backup point guard minutes. Yeah. So. Well, that's and then that's the philosophy, right? Like if you have, let's say you roll in with Brunson and quickly and you're starting backcourt and Forney is out of the picture, then you could essentially have Rose and Grimes as your one-two off the bench. And if Rose is missing time, you have two options. Number one, you could then mix and match where quickly is playing more minutes. Or number two, you then get Deuce McBride minutes, which would be nice. Ah. Jeremy, not Andrew. Oops. My bad. <laughs> Trish yeah. had another super chat for those listening well, on thank the you. pod later. Trish, Trish had another super chat correcting it. Jeremy, not Andrew. Yeah. I'm glad Don't... it's not me that you think hates Derek Rose. Jeremy, why do you hate Derek Rose? It's a great question, Andrew. Um, why do you hate putting up some of the comments for people who desperately want their comments? <laughs> shout out Dirty uh, Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out Dirty Dancing. So yeah, Trish, it's it's all just about prioritizing the younger guys, finding a way if you can get value for Rose, but um I mean, at this point, I'm at the I'm I'm of the belief that he'll be back. MB, thank you for the super chat. Uh, would you actually want Aiden? I'm pretty against bigs who can't shoot well, and it would sort of lock up lock us up for a while as they might end up being untradeable. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm not even the biggest fan of signing bigs to long term contracts or not long term, uh, very large expensive contracts. But I think that with Aiden, it's a little different. It just if Mitchell Robinson hypothetically is getting four years, $60 million. You're basically saying is, is Aiton worth twice the value of Mitch? I think he is. Again, I wouldn't pay it. I think it is an overpay. I'd also like to see if that is a descending contract because that would be nice. And I'd feel a lot better about it. Um, But he, again, he, he can, he can shoot from the perimeter. He's just, he's, he's not going to, make it rain from three, but his face up games really nice. Uh, great screener, you know, finished well rebounds like crazy. Um, I, I just, I prototypically, he makes a lot of sense slot having him slot in. It feels like a better Mitch next would be a better team and the money I'm less concerned about, especially because if the Knicks are above the cap for the next three years and then 2025 rolls around, you can get a new lease on your financial situation. That would be really nice. Uh, that contract, the last year of that contract, is going to look pretty great. You can always figure out from there, and you can always trade him. Uh, I, I understand that the, the philosophy of like, well, if he's making a lot of money, then it's hard to trade him. But if his contract descends, and if the salary cap ascends, and DeAndre Ayton is is you know in his prime or entering his prime, I'm I'm okay with it. I would I would be willing to bend, not break the rule. Uh, the one JP, thank you again for the super chat contribution. Sign Brunson trade for Simons. Thoughts, lol. Simons is also going to. Oh, uh, 
Simmons, not Simons. Sorry, Ben Simmons, I suppose. If it were Simons, probably would have just had the one end, and that's what JP would have meant. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want Ben Simmons at all. If he could play the five consistently, I think the Knicks would be interested. But he can't even get on the floor. He also doesn't do rim protection super well. So uh, good player, really good player when healthy, a borderline great player, but he's got limitations where I just don't think the Knicks are going to want it. Zach Smith, thank you for the Super Chat contribution. Congrats on 1 million. Does Aiton fit with the Tibbs type? Monty seems to have issues with him. Would the front office do that? Could there be a disconnect a la Cam? Uh, Tibbs type, yeah, I, I think he would be. He's you know, he's a little bit higher usage than I think the Knicks have liked in the past. Uh, again, like the reason why I was thinking Aiton wouldn't be in the fold, and he still may not be, was just based on how the Knicks have used their centers. But if the Knicks have a better center, are they willing to change that? Very possible. As for the issues with Monty, don't really know where they stem exactly, but um, I would imagine the Knicks are doing their homework. I think they have their eyes and ears pretty much everywhere and, and just do what they can to get as much info as, as they can. As for Cam, again, I still think it's the Hornets pick just, they tried the Knicks trying to turn that into a, a living, breathing person who's better than the value of the Hornets pick. And in fairness, uh, you know, I didn't think the Hornets pick. Uh, I I feel I felt as though the Hornets pick will convey. And I still think it could or and does, but I understand and understood those at the time who felt wasn't going to convey. This is bad. If it doesn't convey, then they're absolutely right. But you know, is Cam Reddish better than the the? hypothetical of two second round picks i think so i mean that pick was already traded again so uh it feels like it's hot potato with it but maybe there's more to cam again i just think it's more financial than anything at this point but he's been included in so many trades that uh i don't feel confident he'll be here Ahmet met preso glue uh it's 245 here in istanbul apologies if i mispronounce your name i met uh, Jeremy, just tell me Randall not going to get traded and I will go to bed. Uh, see, on that, if I tell you Randall's not going to get traded, then you're going to leave the video. Kind of like having you here. No, hes I don't think he's going to get traded. I, 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 I'm, I've given up. I think he'll be here and he'll just rehab his value. So get some sleep. It's going to be a big day tomorrow. It's going to be a long night for you. Let's go to bed. Robert McGinley, thank you for the Super Chat contribution. We don't want you going anywhere, but serious question for Jeremy. Would you ever want a career in a front office capacity if it becomes available? Uh, listen, teams know where to find me. If they come knocking, I'm always, you know, I'm always listening. What? What are you pointing at? Ah, no, I am not. You have your bird rights. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Nick's Film School can afford to go over the cap <laughs> to re-sign me. Um, but you know what? Much like Jalen Brunson, I'm going to take as many meetings as I can, even though I know I'll, I'm not going to leave here. Uh, so. so when we see you suddenly out out and about in Miami with Pat Riley, I, that's when I should start to get afraid. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Take me to the beach. You know. Yes. Take I'm me to... what? What? Uh, the Fountain Blue in Miami? Uh, well, I was more thinking live. Okay. Yeah. You do that. What, what, yeah. What's the best you got? Uh a Chili's in Long Island? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. Applebee's gives you a ticket to go see Top Gun. I'll take you twice, and you can see it twice. <sighs> That's true. So I appreciate you spending $25 on a yeah. meal at Applebee's. <laughs> Actually, I'd, ra like, I'd rather not do that. Like, if you're taking me to Applebee's, that's just, like, you know, not I, even worth it. So if they eventually become a Blue Wire sponsor, I apologize, Okay. I legitimately hated Applebee's for a long time. So, like, for those of you who are not my age, which is 33, the only thing to do if you were balling on a budget back in, like, the mid-2000s and you were, like, working retail and going to college was wait till 10 o'clock because half-off appetizers is a thing, which, once in a while, is great. What's not great is when you do it every night in Long yeah. Island and it's just like, what do you want to do? Let's go to apps. What do you want to do? Let's go to apps. And lo and behold, at a certain point, it was like it's triggering every time I see. Sorry to use that word, but it's like PTSD every time I see 
and Applebee's. It's like, oh, that's back when I was like 19 and broke, you know? Well, I'll tell you this. Speaking of movies, you know how you can get a head start on, on recruiting me for the next one? Are you going mm -hmm. to Thor on opening night? Yes. You know those popcorn things that they got? Yes. <laughs> Buy me one of those. That's all it takes. I will pay you back. That's Movie all theater popcorn. <laughs> no, 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 no not, not the popcorn. The, oh, the, you want the thing that I want the hammer. Yeah, the hammer thing that it's covering it. Okay. Get me a hammer. I'll pick it up from you. I'll Deal. pay you back for it. You can even eat the popcorn. I just want the hammer. That's your that's your likely bonus, that, Jeremy. Uh, yes, not an unlikely bonus. Like, right. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't go against the cap, so we're we're no, it would it would go against the cap. Yeah. Yes. There you uh, go. Continuing perfect. with the live stream. This has been very productive. Now I get exactly what I needed, and I probably wasn't even going to go to see Thor on opening night because uh, I think logistically that would be challenging. Sam L., thank you for the Super Chat contribution. I see a lot of similarities and organizational lessons learned when evaluating the Brunson signing in comparison to Kyle Lowry's free agency back in 2012. You overpay uh, for heady leadership at the PG. Yeah, I just... You know what I think it is? I, I've seen, obviously folks who have talked about like it's overpaying for a point guard. Yes. The Knicks have gone so long without a point guard that I think fans may not even realize or remember, or just even know what it's like. Just have a steady quarterback for your offense. Like when Stefan Marbury was here, I was in middle school, right? I, I'm an, I'm, I'm an adult. I'm off my parents' health insurance. I have bills like that's how long it has been. Um, so for all of you as well, it has been a long time. I mean, like Chris Persiano was in preschool at the time. I think we'll just say he was like, we got to do something. Right, he was probably in kindergarten. I'll give him some slack. Like finding someone who can just be rock solid, reliable. That to me is important, but he's not a star and that's okay. It just has to be a stepping stone. Just make the Knicks feel respectable. That's all it takes. Like, take the 2020, 2021 season and magnify it. It's not going to be the same magic, because I think that was kind of just magic in a bottle. But, like, still, it's it's the road to redemption, so to speak. And, yeah, that that's exactly how I feel. Uh, Sam L at Nick's Film School. If you pull up Lowry's B ball ref, uh, take a minute analyzing this comp. I think it's a really good historical precedent to look at when projecting where this is heading. Yeah. He, I mean, Lowry was another Villanova point guard. Smart, smart guy. Didn't really, he wasn't great. Um, towards ACL. I think towards ACL twice, once in college and once in the NBA. Wasn't doing a whole lot traded from the Rockets to the Raptors and he found a home and they needed him. And, you know, there was, uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but there was what I noticed because I could not notice it because I was tagged in the entire thing um, that basically someone saying, what's the next plan? Like what's going on? What are they doing here? And it was very, just, just, pessimistic. I don't even want to say cynical. This is very pessimistic, which is not how I operate personally. I'm also not one of those people who is like, you know, just like there has to be a plan. So there's like, I, I, I can tell you, I, there is, I, I, I just know it. Um, how they exactly do it. That's where the gray areas come into play and who the, the stars are. Sure. I know that might sound like, so you don't know it, but I'm telling you, they're not doing this blind. They're really not. Like they have experience. They 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 have hired Walt Perrin. They've hired Brock Holler. I can I understand the whole Leon Rose angle, but to, to get back to the main point, because this does circle back to Lowry. So um the Raptors took them a long time to go from terrible to good to really good to less good, and we've run into LeBron way too much to wow, uh, we won a championship. Uh DeMar DeRozan was drafted in 2009. They traded him in 2018, and they won the 2019 title. It was 10 years, 10 years that it took from drafting DeRozan, nine if you include getting rid of him, and then, or not include that, and then the 10th. We don't realize how long these teams take. The, the Knicks are young. They've got time on their side. They really do, which is why third season of Leon Rose, like, yeah, you want to see some, some momentum in the other direction, but... The way it works with Lowry is 
a reason why the Raptors did poorly for a while is because they lost Chris Bosh. They lost him in free agency to the Heatles. And uh, they weren't good. It took them, I think, the first four years of DeMar DeRozan's career, they didn't make the playoffs. And after the third season, I want to say, they brought in Lowry. And he just started to change the culture. It was good. It was winning. And the Knicks almost traded for him, which, whatever. Probably would have found a way to mess it up anyway. But having Lowry into the fold solidified what they needed to do to be a good team. And then they became a great team. And then they won a title. So I like to look at this Knicks team and think that they're further ahead than that Raptors team when they signed or when they traded for uh, Lowry. Because if you look at the standings for where they were, or the position, I think they had like 34 wins. So just keep getting better. Uh, still Dre, or I guess still DRE, uh, with the Knicks bench Fournier after getting Brunson, assuming being unable to move Fournier. Yeah, I think in that case, if they really couldn't move him, they'd shift him to the bench. I, you know, I think Tibbs' first instinct would be like, I'll make it work, but um, I don't know if that, I don't know about that. Uh, Vincent Russo, super chat. Thank you. Half price apps. Yes. Half price apps. That's uh, that's what Applebee's does. The, the home of the apps and a free ticket to Top Gun Maverick. The greatest movie I've ever seen, potentially. Who's to say? For $25. Tom Romano, I think she meant Andrew hates good New York baseball teams, not Rose. Common mistake. Ooh, Tom bringing the heat. Ah, yes, Andrew says, from the Knicks Film School account, I do not endorse this. I just want people to be very clear. This is Andrew masquerading as uh, behind a brand. Um, ah, yes, I love the bad baseball team who checks notes, still has the best record in the National League, and DeGrom has thrown as many pitches as me this year. Yeah, Tom. Hmm. Wow. Well, uh, I'm a Yankees fan, and uh, they do pretty well when I don't go to a game. So we'll take that. Take that for data. God, I can't believe this is another job. Mm, yeah, seriously. Um, yeah. We are officially through with Super Chats, um, and a lot of the – we can wrap up if you'd like to at this point. Sure. And we have a long live stream tomorrow. So That's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andrew, what are you doing the rest of the night other than – probably editing this well what i'm doing the rest of the night everybody and if you'd like to join us all you have to do is go to the next film school patreon and sign up for either a monroe or the uh, ewing tier and you can join us at our town hall which are having tonight so i'm gonna go ahead over to that as soon as we're we're wrapped up here um and then obviously editing this into a podcast a little later on um yeah so that is those are my plans for tonight. I'm assuming some there's some similarities to your plan tonight, Jerry. <laughs> there will be. Yes. Yes. I think I, I'm going to try to get one episode of The Boys in. Up to episode three. Really yeah, good. So you're on season... Season one. Just started. You're on season one, so you just started. Okay. I'm in just. season two, episode two. So, okay. Yeah. The Boys. Yeah. Good Lord, this show. There's... So, I mean, in the pilot, there's that scene. There's I had so many I'd, that scenes, Jeremy. right? But like, but but you know what I mean by that scene. Are you talking about the deep? When no something happens with Starla, and I have no idea what you're talking about with that. Scene. Uh, A train. Yes, that yes. scene. Okay, A train. I I knew that scene had happened. What I what I didn't know. I didn't know it was. I didn't think it would be, like, oh, where are we going from this? Uh huh. I don't want to give too much away because there might be people who have not seen it. And right, right. Whatnot. But like, I was, I was happily surprised by the progression after that, where it's it's heading. So uh -huh. it's a great concept, really clever. So, so I'll yeah. I'll back you up on the concept for those who are looking for like a show to watch this summer. If you don't do gore, then you probably weren't even interested in the show at all because this is the Game of Thrones was gory. Um, this is Game of Thrones with more blood and there's some cgi stuff at times that looks fake but then there's some really good practical stuff that looks even better um i was in it for like the oh this is cool at four at first and the writing has just taken off through one full season that i'm just fascinated by the different themes that they're they're exploring uh yeah i'm 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 all in, and I kind of annoyed I did. I waited so long to be all in. Shout out to there's there's your your summer homework, everybody. Watch the boys on Amazon. 
Um, you can also substitute like it's 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 basically superheroes. What if they were like treated as celebrities in the real world and we're watching it that way? And um, what they're doing uh, in my head is they're doing an allegory for player empowerment in the NBA. So like <laughs> if if Homelander is really LeBron and he's just making all these demands left and right and controlling things left and right. And then you have different stars that like literally one, one of the superheroes gets shipped off to, uh, this is a spoiler, but well, well, yeah, no, 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 I, I can't I say, I, no, you can't much, say. But, yeah. um, just going with that perspective, it's even more fun. Um, I will let you wrap up. Thanks again, everybody for, I'll just, I'll second what we said earlier. Um, the, <laughs> hold on Tom Romano. I'm going to put this on the screen. Homelander gives 2022 Randall vibes. Well, um, <laughs> probably I'll not to, to the point Jeremy's I'll have to wait and see to, what that means. Actually, yeah, maybe I'll just I'll repeat what we said earlier. Thank you for all the support that you've given us. Um, we're about to take like a mini break uh, when free agency's done and summer league's done. Um, but you know, you you're all awesome, and we really appreciate it. Jeremy, take us home. What Andrew said, yeah. Um, Listen, it's going to be a stressful day. A lot's going to happen. The lead up is going to be really difficult, right? It's going to probably be tricky to function, whether you're sleeping, whether you're doing work, whatever it might be. Um, but it should hopefully be fun. I say hopefully. So um, just get ready for chaos. I feel like if the draft was any indication... I'm not saying this is like, I know what's happening. I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. But just expect chaos because that's just kind of how this front office seems to have been working so far. Um, but yeah, this this has been a blast as always. I can't believe we're up to episode eight of this series. So thank you so much. We, uh, I'll ask a, a small favor if you're watching this. This will be a two-parter. If you don't mind, just download the episodes tomorrow or when they're available. Be super appreciated. Can add to our little total uh, that we got going. We're on a month schedule of June first to June thirtieth. It'd be we've broken records thus far. It'd be really cool. Um, so just every little bit counts. That would be very kind. But yeah, uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Really excited to walk you through everything as it happens, all the chaos, all the drama. You can see me try to work in real time. You can see John try to work in real time. Uh, we'll do some fun stuff. And the fact that it'll be episode 500 just makes it all the cooler. So um, thank you. Thank you so much. Excited to see you tomorrow. And uh, with that, I bid you a fond farewell. <laughs>